hearts and minds be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Don't pretend to come into my house and say that you're safe. Don't come into this place and say, it's the temple of the Lord, it's the temple of the Lord, it's the temple of... Did you catch that? That's what Jeremiah is saying, right? God sent Jeremiah to go and stand at the gate of the temple and say, you've turned my house into a den of thieves. Because you go out and you worship Baal, and you go out and you murder, or you go out and you do whatever you want to any other time, but then you come into these doors and you say, I'm safe because this is God's house and I'm one of God's children. Jeremiah tells them, just as I tell you, you can't do that. Or as the, the old um, commercial went, it doesn't work that way. Right? This is not how this works. This is not how any of this works. It's not about getting to do with everyone and thinking I can just come to church and then everything's just going to be made poof, all right. Right? That's what this says. And I can't sugarcoat it for you. That's what the reading says. On this Christ the King Sunday, this end of the year, as we prepare to go into Advent to start our waiting on the coming of Christ, Christmas, the baby coming to us in the manger, or as we as Christians who have known the birth of our Savior, we get into Advent and wait the second coming of Christ, right? Which we know is coming at some point. It's not about us just showing up here and doing our duty. It's got to be about more than that. And that's why I believe the people who put these readings together this morning did it the way that they did it. Plus it just falls perfectly for, for Jackson's baptism. right? It doesn't start with chapter 7, which is where I started. It starts with chapter 1, where in the 13th year of the reign of King <coughs> Josiah, I believe... It's in verse 3, actually. It's not any of the verses that we have. But Jer Jeremiah is called by God. God comes to Jeremiah and says, Before you were formed, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you, and I knew what I was going to send you to go and do. I was going to send you to go and do some things that no, none of us would probably want to. Right? To overthrow nations and overthrow kingdoms, to pluck up and pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. So he's going to take and put things in their proper place, to get rid of things that don't need to be there, and then to build up what God has called him to do. But here's the thing, right? Jeremiah says to God, God, I can't do that because I'm just a little boy. I'm just a little kid. I can't possibly go and do all these things that you want me to. But God says to him, right? Ah, but the Lord said to me, do not say I am only a boy. For you shall go to all who I have sent you and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Right? Just here in a little bit we're going to see Jackson come up to this, this font. I'm going to pour this water in. <coughs> this plain tap water that Helen got out of the faucet back here. It's no more special than anything else. Right? But I'm going to pour it into this bowl, and I'm going to say some words over it that God told us to say, and then I'm going to pour water over Jackson's head. And he's probably going to cry. <laughs> and we all should cry, really, when we figure out what this is about, because this, God is going to take Jackson and use him for things that Jackson doesn't want to go and do. Just like God's going to take each and every one of us sometimes and use us for things that we don't want to do. Right? Because God says to the people that you can't come into my house and do after you've gone out and done whatever you want and just say that I'm safe here now because I'm in the house of God. It's about living a life that God calls us to in this place. It's about living a life that God draws us to when we come from this place. It's about living a life that is about being with the widow and being with the orphan and being about justice and being about the oppressed and being about those who need our help. Right? It's not about just coming here and doing our duty because that's what God has called us to do. It's about understanding what happens at this font right here 
when those waters are poured and that pastor said those words over him and then that pastor, whoever it was, when they poured it over top of your head and said, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And then after that, they took some water, they took some oil, and they came up to you and they went onto your forehead and they said, Child of God, I'm going to do you in just a little bit. Look right before I'm going to do it. Jackson, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. And this is where the sermon gets um, interactive, right? I want you to turn to your neighbor. You're going to have to do this back and forth several times here, so... Turn to your neighbor. And on the... You don't have a neighbor. Bruce will be your neighbor. Asher's your neighbor. <laughs> Pay attention when I call his name. But you're going to turn to your neighbor and you're going to say their name and you're going to make the sign of the cross on their forehead and you're going to say... Patrick, <laughs> child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Turn to you. <laughs> Don't do it to Jackson yet. He hasn't been done yet. <laughs> Don't do it too early. Nobody wants to come to this and she's sick. Right. Because we are all God's children, right? We've all been called and named and claimed in that font just as Jeremiah was. Just as God knew Jeremiah before he formed him in his mother's womb, God knew you and he called you to do something specific. I saw a, a, a thing posting on Facebook this morning that said, Someone somewhere is waiting for you to do what God has called you to do. Someone somewhere is waiting on you to do what God has called you to do. Think about that. For about 40 years. See, God has placed each and every one of us here for a purpose. And it is our walking through life that helps us to share His love and His grace and His mercy with the world just as He shared it with us. And it's our walking through life knowing that we can do it because God has empowered us and has promised us, just as he promised Jeremiah, that I'm going to be with you everywhere you go. So when you have to go to the temple and tell them, hey, you can't just come here and do your thing and then think you're okay. Because I see you, right? That's the very last line of our, of our, our reading this morning. When I read that, I think of what's coming in 25 or 30 days, right? He sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He knows if you've been bad or good. Right? This is not, I'm not talking about Santa here, though. I'm talking about God. God sees you. And He knows when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He knows what you're doing every last waking minute of your life. And you know what? Bless you. Even though He knows that, He still loves you. And He still wants to be with you. And He still empowers you to go into the world and to share His love. Because time and time again, He shows us that He calls broken people to go and do His work. Because God takes what is broken and makes it beautiful. Because God takes what is broken and shows the world that what you thought was broken isn't actually broken. It's actually already beautiful. So on this last Sunday of the church year, as we prepare for the coming of our Savior in a manger, let us remember that God names us and claims us here not to just be able to do whatever we want, but to empower us to live our lives in love and to share that love with everyone we come in contact with because He's with us always, walking through this world, showing us what we should be doing. So live out your baptismal promises just as we're going to do with Jackson here in a few minutes. And remember that God loves you, and He wants you to share His love with all the world.